Yo, what's up friends? Welcome back to my YouTube channel and thank you for checking in today. Hope it's going pretty well. So today, this is going to be the third part of my series where I'm going over PhotoFox and how you can kind of edit your pictures and do some really cool photo editing all from your smartphone. And today's video is all going to be going over how to use the overlay feature on there, use multiple layers, as well as kind of draw to make your own shadows. So let's go ahead and let's jump into it. I'm going to pull my phone screen up right here. Boom. Right now, what you're seeing on here is you're seeing our model's face, just a white, black and white picture of our model. And what you're going to do is when you go into select your stock picture, just go ahead and type in face and you're going to see that. So the next thing we're going to do is once you have that on there, when on our layers panel on the right hand, we're going to click on our only layer, the woman's face, press on duplicate. Now we have two layers of the same thing. So nothing looks different by selecting either one of them, but we select the top one. We go down to the bottom under the layers tab in our toolbar. There's H flip, click on that. So now we can see that that light is switching back and forth from right to left, depending on how we're rotating our layer. So we want the shadow to be on the left hand side with the top layer selected go ahead and press opacity we're gonna knock that down to about 50 percent so it looks like the two layers are just one the shadows are on both sides you'll see why we really need to do this later on so once that's confirmed go ahead and press the little arrow up and we're gonna go ahead and save this to our camera roll because this is gonna create that smart object so whatever we do it manipulates both of these layers at the same time so do save the camera roll and just you know we've been doing that a lot so make that a habit uh, once you feel as though you've made anything that's kind of like a that's kind of like a snapshot of everything so now we're gonna go ahead into our photos photos in the very bottom select it so now we just pulled up as a single layer our model space but with the shadows on both sides the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go into the little plus sign select on photo and in the same search bar on their face there's that lion which is really cool really powerful looking it's really gonna kind of accentuate our models and so take our lion we're gonna knock that opacity down pretty far so we can see the model underneath select transform use our fingers and let's go ahead and let's try and line the eyes up to the best of our ability i think that looks good so now what we're going to do is raise that opacity back up you don't have to do this but this kind of makes it a little bit more dramatic in my opinion so now we just see our lion's face over there but we're going to do blending right over here and blending gives you multiple options uh for this and you can kind of see the the uh prompts that come up with normal overlay multiply all of those and you kind of see how the the model in there kind of fades into the background and kind of adjusts the opacity in a certain way but what we're going to do here is we slide over there's the option in there it's color burn Click on that one. Look at that. That's pretty neat. We've already blended that line over our model's face. So the next thing we're going to do is go into layers, handy dandy, eraser. Tap on eraser, and we're going to go ahead and go around our subject, making sure not to get any of the model and just kind of making that blend in, getting rid of that background. That already looks really cool. We've really blended that model in with the lion. But as you saw in the thumbnail, I don't want to just do just a lion on there. So we're going to take our finger. And we're going to swipe down about diagonally across our model's face so that we can add in a second layer that's going to kind of counteract the lion. Um, and this is where you can kind of choose how you want it to be. I think that looks pretty cool just like that. So we just have the left-hand side of her face using that mask of the lion. Keep that like that. We're going to go ahead and confirm that. So that looks sweet. So go ahead. We're going to save that to our camera roll. So we have a smart object. Excellent. So now what we're going to do is we're going to go back into our stock pictures at the top. We're going to type in flower and we got a couple of flower options, but the one I want to use is the one with uh, the four pink roses right there on the left. Click on that. That pops up. Now this is where you can kind of get creative for the sake of this video. I'm just going to go ahead and select the one main flower that I think is really popping out. Take our good eraser and then just go ahead and get rid of everything else. So now it looks like you have that flower that's isolated on there, right? What we're gonna wanna do is because there may be some pieces that are showing off a little bit of the color that we don't want, press on the little plus sign, do photo, go into your stock pictures, and we're gonna be something that's kind of bright. So by typing in white at the top up there, we have an object here that's just very bright and we can help us see if there's any other colors that we're missing. We can see that our flower object really is just the pink and the blues and all that are gone. Get rid of the bottom layer, click on it, delete. Go ahead and save this as our smart object into our camera roll. Okay, so now that you have that saved, go ahead and open up the model with the lion's face that we have right now. Next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna do add the layer, photo, and then that flower that we recently made, go ahead and pull that one up and then kind of put it, put it wherever you want it to be. We're going to go ahead and do blending again, slide over to color burn, and then you can add that in. See, as you can see, it really just blends in with the model. And so that's why we had to do the flip, because if we hadn't done that, we wouldn't have been able to see on the left hand side where the model's shoulders and neck were. So we're going ahead and just going to put these over on the side and make it a little bigger. So we don't have to make too many because we're going to start duplicating these layers. So put that there. Looks cool. Now clicking on the flower layer on the right, we can go ahead and select a duplicate 
duplicate, click on that. And now we're just gonna move our finger and move the duplicate layer over a bit. And we're gonna go ahead and keep washing and repeating that until our entire left side of the model is gonna be covered with flowers. And in PhotoFox, you only have up to five layers available. So now we've kind of run out. We've only been able to put four flowers on our model. So this is where that washing, repeating of saving to our camera roll, and then re-adding in, going into your photos, clicking on the most recent one, and that condolences and bounces it into a single layer. So keep doing that, and then you can keep adding in your flower, color burn, and then just kind of move that around. Awesome. So now that you have that with the flowers on the bottom, the line on the right, you consolidate that all into a smart object into one layer. You left with something like this. And that looks cool, but there's parts of this that just, they're not filled in yet. Um, there's really no definition between where her, her chin and her jawline is, where it's the rest of her neck. So we're gonna do, we're just gonna do a plus sign on the top right. We're gonna do a transparent layer. And so now what we can do is we can really start adding in a natural shadow and we can draw this in this time. So by going to a toolbar on the bottom right, we can press on artistic, gives us a few options here we'll press on doodle on the right let's slide over and do charcoal and then i like ch5 depending on what what kind of artist you are what kind of brushes you want to use if you want a harder or a softer kind of brush pick different ones i think ch5 is pretty good for shadows let's do tools we'll select our color on the right we're going to slide the colors all the way over to the right press on that dark gray one on the far right now if you really want to get picky you can go ahead and swipe up and you'll see a better option for different colors you can choose from go ahead and you press the color option again that disappears so now if we zoom in we can go ahead and we can start Start drawing on our model here just kind of going around because we're gonna fix this all later it looks good right no it looks terrible of course it looks terrible all right confirm that so now what we're gonna do you guys say we're gonna do blending with the top layer selected what we just drew plus some blending go over and we'll do color burn and look at that we've added a dark shadow on there but let's say like oh you know what I'm missing a little bit under her chin I want that to be just a little bit darker no problem go over to artistic on the right doodle go ahead and select your brush again and get that all set up and now we can do is you if you zoom in since blending's already been selected and you could have done this from the beginning if you wanted to you start drawing it's just gonna add the blended in parts so and now it already looks like that natural shadow so you can really see how you want it to be. Make it maybe a little bit darker right in the little crevice over there. Pull back and there you go. Now you've added more lights to your model and you've kind of artistically added a shadow onto there to make it look more natural and again a blending of two different objects. And that's it. You can definitely spending time to really get things where you wanted them to be. Work on those shadows to focus what you wanted to accent and what you didn't. I just want to get a basic understanding of what the tools were that you could use here. How great the blending tools in PhotoFox to really just kind of sculpt all this out together and blend those two um two different layers together awesome well thanks friends so much for checking in i hope you enjoyed this video this is again part three of the photo fox tutorial and these are the big three things i want to touch on the eraser tool the light effects and then the blending those are the three i really use on photo fox and i hope you really enjoyed this and learned how to make those pictures especially since all this can be done on your smartphone if you guys end up doing anything uh with photo fox please tag me in on instagram at instagraffiti or twitter at ryan go ahead and like comment dislike subscribe whatever you guys want this is as much my channel as it is yours and i love to see where all this takes us so friends thank you so much for checking in and i can't wait to see you in the next one peace